a demented, torturing killer clown who kills people and doesn't make a sound. Sign me up. <laughs>to my channel it's tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss 2016's terrifier <sighs> yes i did say 2016 yes i know i'm late but when you've grown up with so much horror and you've watched it's chapter one and two the most recent it's clown killer clowns from out of space all of the spectrum when this came out i did not immediately jump on it how do I feel about it now, just watching it? Before we get into that, I need you guys to drop down and like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you have yet to do so. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that. Then we're gonna come back and discuss all things Terrifier. <laughs> the thumbnail i love this movie to start off i like the title of the movie it's just terrifier yes we know that it's a clown but i like that they didn't go with the typical clown you know art the clown like they just you know kind of left it terrifier i like that i like that as soon as the movie starts we don't waste any time we get right into what this character is about and we are introduced to, you know, an uh, interviewer interviewing someone. He's clearly mangled and Hannibal lecter her face. So we already know what he's capable of. And then right after that, we get into a Nightmare on Elm Street style. You remember the Nightmare on Elm Street, the intro, when they're, um, you know, he's getting ready, sharpening the blades and that very first one. I felt that. And we see Art the Clown and we see him getting ready and we see, you know, that white, white makeup. I really like the costuming here. I really like that, you know, it was a play on the more old school clowns and there wasn't a lot of color. There wasn't anything vibrant. There is nothing exciting about Art the Clown. There is nothing inviting. There is nothing that makes you go, because you know, with it, you know, you might, even with the killer clowns from outer space, they're so colorful and whimsical. A kid might just, hey, can I get a balloon? Hey, can I, you know, get some of that cotton candy that you're going to wrap me up in? Art the Clown has given us none of that. Art the Clown looks very creepy. I like that. Now, even though Art's costuming is very simplistic, it's very effective. And it separates him from other clowns that we've seen in the past. And when we see Art, we're going to know it's him. With that being said... This movie felt very 80s to me, which I love, because who doesn't love a good 80s horror? Felt very, you know, old school. And I like that right away, even with, you know, the news anchor or what, whoever she was, the interviewer getting, you know, her eyes mangled and we see, you know, how manic he's made this past victim. We jump right into Halloween night and, you know, two drunk girls. Questionable acting, you know, maybe it's not the best, but it was good for the movie. I like that we didn't waste any time getting to the gore of it all. Immediately, right away, we see already that Art is like, has a bag of tricks. This is the first movie where I've seen like multiple weapons and all these things being used by a clown. Yes, we have seen, you know, more so the, um, you know, Leatherface and other torture style movies, but it hit differently for me here. Once we get into it, cause you know, of course we have the more, you know, girl who's drunk, a little bit off her rocker, <laughs> very much so unaware. And then we have the other friend, the smart friend who's very aware, but still we'll get to that. <laughs> 
very aware of her surroundings and recognizes, you know, something is off. You might want to leave him alone. We jump right into that. We don't waste time, you know, with off-brand scares and unnecessary jumps and we get right into the murder of it all and boy was I here for it like huh I didn't know how great it would feel you know not not to have to, you know to suffer through those two you know main characters going to a Halloween party party <laughs> party mingling with other you know men and being a little slutty drinking and the bad acting of it all no Whoever directed this film, they knew what we came here for and what we wanted to see. Carnage. We get right into, you know, the piece of parlor where we, you know, we see the friend and she's, ah, oh, we're taking pictures. Like, who's scared? Not me. It's crazy. Because, boy, was I not messing with art. Like, I love his look and... I was just upset at myself that it took so long to watch this movie. <laughs> Soon as we get into the creep factor of it all and, you know, him writing on the wall with the feces and we see, you know, how far removed we are from since <laughs> putting the ring on our finger. I'm like, you're so comfortable with this stranger. I don't care what he has on. He's a stranger. But, you know, that's the allure of clowns because you always assume clowns come, you know, with bubbles and joy and balloons and cotton candy and popcorn. Art came to fuck shit up and leave. Um, we get into, you know, him, you know, being thrown out. And, of course, the other girl is more sore warm than the other one. And, you know, like, okay, well, hmm, where are we going with this? Does Art leave and go anywhere and, you know, send us on, these, on this wild goose chase for us to just see some girls get mangled and murdered? No, we get right into it. He comes back into the piece of parlor that he is thrown out of and murders two men now this is the first ounce of gore that we see in the movie and it's done really well it was right about this point that i realized he hadn't said a word he had not said a word now the love of the silent killer has kind of went you know wayward especially when it's you know something as physical as a, as a clown it's not a ghost it's not a spirit this is someone in the world we go through so much with, you know, even if they are silent, you know, you need the killer to <clears throat> grunt and ah and scream, say something, do something. Art does nothing. Art says nothing. And boy, was it entertaining. It was so entertaining for him not to say a word. And I was so happy and here for it. <laughs> like he's killing and clearly enjoying what he's doing and laughing and we see it nothing's coming out it was wonderful so by the time we see that art has no pause <laughs> and he's killed these two men in this piece of parlor and i love the effectiveness of throughout the entire movie the more you know body count the body as the body count gets higher the blood splatter on that suit gets more and more until he's practically red it was so effective him just being like all white and the splatter just consistently really good and this is when we get into the dumb decision making part on our characters behalf of the story um you know the girls flat tire oh i gotta pee and call my sister to get us cool i'm gonna go in the most bizarre looking abandoned building to use the bathroom in this questionable disgusting bathroom i love how when characters need to use bathrooms in movies they're always disgusting and then they go anyway like girl you could have just went outside <laughs> first of all you're not leaving me alone in this car <laughs> but just that she's going in you know with the nice bald head janitor oh no uh he was a rat exterminator um you know, we get this and I look how she's just sitting like, oh my God, someone's murdering people. Oh, I just heard about, I was just at that pizza parlor. Oh my God, I'm so cute. Very Jessica Simpson. <laughs> in the meantime, the clown has gotten in the car and I love how he just sits there and he's like, <laughs> I love that we really didn't get a lot of, you know, like, jump jump scares it was just like we already saw him and then we see him as he's going for the person very good but you know now we're alone we're in the building Fran is taken 
And I was like, how long is she gonna stay in there? How, what, what are you doing? What the hell do you mean you don't even wait for you? Yes, sir, please wait for me, please do. But no, we're alone. We bump into this questionable, homeless, maybe mentally ill character because she's, you know, thinking that a doll is her actual child. And for a moment I was like, what's happening here? And then it was thrown away. <laughs> Because immediately, I love that the movie had no pause. They knew what we wanted to see. We have some good chasing here, some acting, you know, those mad chase and fall down. Like, oh, you know, we get so mad, you yell at the screen, girl, get up, get up, get up. You had, had some of that. Wonderful. <laughs> and this is when, like, that bag of tricks came out. Because I was like, what the? I mean, we saw what he had in the bag. But I thought, you know, it was just for show. No, we saw Art use every single thing he had in his bag. Like, we're, you know, tripping her, stabbing her, sawing things, taping her to chairs, torture, and everything is, you know, as far as horror goes for me, normal. <laughs> you know, a couple of jabs, stabbing, hiding, ducking, rolling. Please help me, why are you doing this? Normal. Oh, he just tried to kill me? Normal. By the time she's captured and made to, you know, be duct taped to the chair, I was like, let me see, what is he gonna do differently than what I've already seen? It takes a lot, and I do mean a lot, to kind of make me squeamish in a horror or, you know, make my stomach get any jizz. When he hung the friend upside down and began to saw her in half and they like literally didn't cut away and you know you saw the guts and, and I was like wow like am I am I squeamish? I was. It was good. <laughs> it was good. I, I loved all of that like and you saw just how because at this point like we saw him you know turn the um you know parlor piece of parlor guys you know into the whole jack-o-lantern and, and you know we saw the splatter happening but we didn't really see much of the murder when he cut the friend in half we saw everything and we saw just how far he was willing to go with the torture i was like oh girl oh. now at this time we've had multiple you know we've stabbed the clown and we've ran you know you're yelling at the screen which i love like girl why are you stopping Kill him, hit him again, stab him again, slit his throat, cut his head off. Cut the head off. No, we stab a little bit and we run. We escape a little bit and we run. So we're out of the chair and we're running. And he's, you know, he's alarmed, but on the low, he's not. Because he's like, I'm going to catch you anyway. This is something he does. He loves it. But by the time, you know, she's been stabbed, she's finally gotten away. And it looks like she's getting the best of him, you know, hitting him with this, um, it's like this big, you know, two by four type of piece, whatever this piece of wood. I don't know. I'm not a construction worker. Um, at this point, I was like lost for words because the clown, he pulled out a gun and shot her. And it turned into boys in hood out of nowhere. Like, you know, when he goes back to avenge Ricky and shoots the guy and, you know, you see that gun smoking. I was like, what? I've never seen. Y'all don't know how blown away I was when he just pulled out a gun and was like, ha ha ha, pop, pop. Like, it got real gangster just for a second. I was like, what the hell? That's different. That's unique. And I was here for it. We get so much of the same thing. Him pulling out that gun and murdering her out of nowhere blew me away. We want that kind of stuff do more of that just have random serial killers who normally stick to an axe it's an axe murderer he has an axe it's michael myers so most likely he has a knife it's you know candy man so he has a hook just have a random killer so you know pop pop effective oh in all we've seen you know him saw people in half uh inject people <laughs> with things um saw this and cut this and we have all these different things shoot someone at point blank range 
And then at this point of the story, the homeless woman comes more into play and, you know, she's trying to grab the attention of the exterminator who is none the wiser. He's just been very 80s, you know, with those headphones. <laughs> Going about his business. Meanwhile, everyone's getting hacked away in this building. Um, at this point, he's knocked out and, you know, uh, whoever he tried to call a fellow exterminator, you know, has shown up along with the sister, you know, the nice sister who was, you know, just in college and feeling like she's going to, you know, get the fuck up sister. <laughs> like, oh, she always needs something. Let me just go. She's there. And then we have more dumb decision making on the character's part. Like, girl, when I pulled up and you run outside, I'm calling once, maybe twice, having a little look around and I'm driving off. I'm not about to get out and come back into this questionable building and come look for you. She ain't meet you in the back with this text message. No, girl, you can come to the front in the light. But no, this is horror, so she went in the building. <laughs> she went in the building and once again, she's pulled all into the art clown of it all. Just after the homeless woman. Now I like how he kind of toyed with the idea because even though she's homeless and we see, you know, mentally there are things going on, she has enough sense to, you know, have you ever, you know, felt a mother's touch? Let me try to, you know, identify with you and hug you so you'll give me my baby back. My fake porcelain baby. And you know, we get that that some thumb sucking moment and just for a moment, hey, maybe maybe art has a little soft spot no <laughs> it's at this moment with the sister looking around you know the exterminator is knocked unconscious now looking around i like how even with the two pizza parlor guys the torture and the hate of it all all the killing the murderous activity was like singled out just for the women Cause I swear he's, oh, let me just knock him on the head. Oh, let me, you know, just stab him or cut him up. Like, no, but we whole ass torturing, damn near hostile for these women. All right, see what y'all trying to do. She's looking, she's searching. And I'm like, you really go walk around this building, girl? Horrible, <laughs> horrible. I like the tint that was on the movie also. So that the color of the blood and certain things like it may be, you know, a really low budget film. It didn't really take away from that. The the tint, the color of this film really helped with that. And the way the movie was shot also. They utilized what they had. Cause it's, you know, pretty much a one shot, one location movie. Um, we're looking around, right? And we're going and we're searching. My sister had anybody? She's already found the mangled, sawed in half body of her friend. She keeps looking. <laughs> You know, sister, find my sister. Cause man, I might have to leave you in here cause I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Goes to look for her and we see, you know, a body that looks, you know, battered and hair. And she's assuming that this is like, girl, you don't know what your own sister looks like. You don't know this ain't your damn sister. I thought it was the, you know, the homeless, the homeless woman. No. It is art. Art has chopped off, you know, the better part of this woman's scalp. He's wearing her, not only her hair, but also her breast. And proceeds to chase after the sister naked. The Marilyn Manson of it all. It was giving me very much 90s Marilyn Manson. And I was here for it. I was like, oh my goodness, that looks so weird. And the effectiveness of, you know, her hiding in the um, the locker and her looking through that hole. And he's out there like, oh, I'm like, oh, God, demented. <laughs> but, you know, we have another person, you know, show up and we get another, you know, man. And I'm glad I was like, how easy are you going to go on these men? Because you show clocked old dude with the hammer and walked off. But, you know, we got more torture. You know, we got the throat and he, the whole head. And I love how we didn't have cutaways, like we didn't get, you know, hmm, wonder what that kill looked like. No, we got to see it. We get another good murder in time for her to have her chase and run with him. At which we see that the other exterminator is still alive, goes and tries to help, you know, let's stab him and knock him out and not actually kill him <laughs> and go call the police as if he hasn't, there has been no access for y'all to get out of here. Clearly all windows and exits are locked, but we're still gonna... Oh, the dumb decisions of horror movies. 
but they're trying and trying to get away and all of this stuff of course art pops back up murders him and goes for the girl she escapes barely and at this point they have gotten a chance to call the police but he gets a hold of her and goes in you know for the kill to torture her i like how she thought she was safe for a minute and art zooms in with the truck dancing and vibing and singing not saying anything to what's being played in the car now just for a split second because we heard the police coming up we knew that they were coming i don't know why that we're not staying here we're getting out of here we're not waiting for any police why not what else you gonna do <laughs> get murdered <laughs> Just for a second, just because he heard those sirens, like, hmm, is he going to stop? Is he going to run away? No. No. Stays to eat and play with her face. <sighs> I was like, oh, he's crazy, crazy. Now, at this point, with the police rolling up, you know, giving him time to play and fiddle with all of the knickknacks on his body, you don't know if this man has, shoot him. He takes the gun and blows his brains out, you know, after he's partaked in the, the sister. <laughs> and I'm like, is he gone? Like, he killed himself? This just like that? Okay. <laughs> At this point, we, you know, we go into, you know, the coroner's office and hmm, that regular, once we saw that body get hauled i was like oh this is one of those horrors he's coming back because any psycho killer <laughs> who ends up with their body in that black bag and is hauled off to the coroner's office they always come back so we get in going and vibing and we see lights flicker i was like is there you know a higher power going on exactly what clown kind of clown is this because we clearly saw him blow his brains out or was it a clown trick i don't know <laughs> but you know comes back and we're you know left to believe that he murdered the um the corner in the you know but we get back into you know the sister and the parents who were all too happy to go go get her i was like y'all a little too happy <laughs> but we end with you know seeing that you know the cycle continues and he's done to her face what he's done to the character in the beginning hmm and that's where we end. I loved it. I loved every minute of this movie for what it was. Of course, you know, B horror movies were gonna have, you know, not the best acting. There wasn't, you know, a well known actor in this movie. And we didn't need that. The acting was pretty decent. They worked really well with what they have. And what they had that no other movies have is art, the clown, the terrifier. And it was so good i loved it all i wouldn't add anything and i wouldn't take anything else away they gave me just what i wanted for this type of movie the kills that's what we come for the kills and the art of it all like he is so good i cannot wait i'm looking forward to you know more installments the part twos the part threes he has the potential to be a horror icon and i'm here for it drop down let me know if you guys have seen this. I hope you have. It was 2016. If there is a chance that you have not seen this movie, sorry for the spoilers, but go watch it. <laughs> go and watch it. It is very much worth your time. Art the Clown, the Terrifier is not to be missed. He is something special and I'm looking forward to seeing more from this director and this team, this character in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you have yet to do so. I see you guys for my next review. Bye.